Good evening and welcome to Special Assignment. I'm your host, Ashraf Garda. Tonight we expose a controversial land deal in Mozambique involving South African sugarcane giant Tonga Fulet. The KZN-based company acquired an initial concession of 30,000 hectares to grow sugarcane. However, in their quest for bigger profits, in agreement with the Mozambican government, they further acquired thousands of hectares of additional land. Our investigation found that the land belonged to small-scale farmers who were solely dependent on it to feed their families. They say this deal is threatening their livelihood. This investigation by Frank Farrow. Tonga Tulip's Mozambican harvests produce record profits for the sugar giant, fertile soil, plenty of sunshine and the abundance of water and land have delivered a bumper crop year on year. This, coupled with government's radical tax cuts and duty-free exports, which are an added benefit for the KZN-based company. We had a, what we call a sugar, Mozambique sugar policy that not only Tonga specific world the investors that they came at the time, they enjoyed a lot of tax holidays. You know, special agriculture is always treated as special. But sadly, this comes at a huge cost for indigenous farmers who have given up their communal land for sugar farming. The sugar giant's push for bigger profits is alleged to have had dire consequences on the lives of small-scale farmers who gave up their land to Tonga Tulip in exchange for jobs. However, this controversial land claim has displaced indigenous farmers, threatened their livelihood and food security. In the rural village of Tres de Febrero, in the province of Maputo, 42-year-old Katerina George is getting ready for work. She begins the day by preparing something for the family to eat. The family survives on a staple of maize, which is grown on a small patch of land. A neighbor helps her prepare the meal. E sai para mim a machamba da sucessão onde semeio milho, mandioca, batata doce e feijão. The two women walk together along the busy road that links the capital of Maputo with northern Mozambique. It's a dangerous stretch of road, notorious for accidents. It takes them about an hour of walking before they get to their patch of land. This land was allocated to them by the government when they gave up their communal land to Tonga Tulit. transporte. In casa, 15 para as 4 de manhã, chego aqui às 5, começo a trabalhar na minha machamba, saio da minha machamba às 9, chego aqui no serviço às 10. Catarina's land forms part of an extended government concession. Tonga Tulit has an 88% share, while the Mozambican government has a remainder 12%. The Ministry of Agriculture says the sugar company needed additional land to expand its operations. Entendeu-se estender uh, a área de Chinavane para Magudo, tanto é um distrito adjacente. Um, uh, e, e, e os sul-africanos beneficiaram de uma área quase de 10 mil hectares, portanto, em extensão. However, UNAC, the National Union of Indigenous Farmers, says Tonga Tulip's expansion has only brought hardship and misery for small-scale farmers in the region. 
Essa é a realidade, porque ali é, é a área natural dos camponeses daquela zona. Cada pessoa tinha mais de 15 hectares, 18 hectares. Mas, através destes projetos, foram resumidas as áreas deles e a área maior está com os projetos, o produtor de cana, que é Tongado. E eles foram roubados as terras deles. E aí, nessa terra que eles têm agora, não tem benefício suficiente, porque se dá um por hectare, às vezes o outro recebe 15 mil por hectare na, na safra de, de cana doce. Esse é um roubo autêntico para eles. We kept our camera rolling while the director general of Tonga Gillette defended the company in a manner which many would find patronizing. We're developing the rural communities now, at least they have a bread to eat and all this type of thing. You know, I'm not saying these communities with this project they reach, mm -hmm. but they're out of a, a line of poverty, at least. They live maybe. Uh, they live now maybe on, on $3 a day, not $0 a day. How much, how much? That's something yeah. that you needed to think about. The land was originally used by small-scale farmers to plant food crops. Tongot Hewlett acquired an initial concession of 31,000 hectares to plant sugarcane. But due to the rapid expansion of the plant, they have now increased this to 10,000 hectares. This has led them to coming into direct conflict with local farmers. The sugar giant has now covered an entire area of fertile soil with sugar cane. With only about a hundred hectares of farmland left for food crops, the company's sugar mills in Shinavan and Mafambisi produce more than 300,000 tons of sugar annually. Profits have tripled to a staggering 402 million rand per annum. Some of these profits can be directly attributed to small farmers like Katerina George. A minha parcela tem três hectares e meio de cana de açúcar. Okay. Quando chegar a safra, uh, qu quanta cana vais tirar aí? Quando chegar a safra, isso não está nas minhas mãos, está na, na açucareira de Incomate. Dependendo dos quilos, dependendo da, da colheita que há na minha machamba. Mas tudo isso, nós dependemos da... Da, quer dizer, o nosso vestimento depende de, 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 de cada hectare. Catarina é parte de uma associação de mais de 2,000 small-scale farmers growing sugarcane for Tonga Hewlett. She paid about 15,000 mitikais, which is little more than 4,000 rand per hectare of cane. Payments are done annually, which means that for the rest of the year, she's dependent on food crops she grows on a small patch of land. Unak says this method of payment is a gross injustice to the poor. Ah, o que é justo é pagar em toneladas, ele poder saber, porque nós sabemos que em toneladas sairia mais, mais ou menos razoável. Em, em hectares, é está, estamos a ver que é um roubo, é um desvio. Porque o camponês, como não está a aprofundar muito, não tem experiência, como, se, como qual é o rendimento sobre a produção de carne, ele está, está a receber a cristalidade, mas olhando na realidade, ele não está a ganhar nada. We asked the sugar farmer in Tongat how sugar cane prices are determined. Priya's lekker forms about 200 hectares of cane, which is sells to the Tonga Hewlett Mill in KZN. Price is determined per ton, directly related to relative value, which is your recovery value on your sugar cane, RV, and we get paid on RVs. That's why you see a lot of people ripen their cane as well. Explain uh, the basic principle behind the RVs. What does it mean? It means how much sugar you can recover per ton of cane, and you get paid by that. Uh, if, you're an, if you're an exceptionally good farmer, you tend to get paid more than the rest of the people. Prians is paid about 360 rand per ton of sugar cane. In KZN, the yields produce about 80 tons of cane per hectare. However, in Mozambique, where the soils are more fertile, small farmers like Katerina get almost twice as much sugar cane. So why is she not paid more for her harvests? Bem, só que do momento, não sei. Só que quando dia a dia, ninguém que quer viver muito mal. Do dia a dia, cada qual quer viver muito bem. Só que nós estávamos a pedir para ver se na van aumenta o salário, para nós continuarmos a trabalhar. É a nossa preocupação. Coming up, we explore how toxic chemicals allegedly dumped in the water by the sugar giant is affecting poor communities. Tonga Hewlett uses more than 10 million cubic meters of water annually in the manufacturing process of sugar. More water is used for irrigation purposes. 
In Mozambique, the water is drawn from the Inkomati River. UNAC, the National Union of Indigenous Farmers, says this scarce resource is overused and poorly managed by the sugar company. Juan Mutembo says the excess water from the mill, which is pumped back into the river, is flooding farmlands, destroying crops. A maior parte da terra produtiva está coberta de água e eles não conseguem produzir. E esse limite a quantidade produtiva do camponês. Esse é o, problema, é o primeiro problema. O segundo problema é o fecho dos caminhos naturais para a transição de água para o rio em Comate, onde é, é, é o fós, onde a água desagua. Esse é o segundo problema. O terceiro problema falta de apoio para eles poderem continuar com as suas atividades, porque a zona onde eles podiam fazer as produções está, está inundada de água. We asked the district government at Manisa what other problems they experience with water flows from the Inkomati River. This government official says they often have to intervene in conflicts between indigenous farmers and the sugar company when their water source is cut off from them. Sometimes the company need water. They make a small dip, for example, to get water to the community. The water doesn't go to the community. This, this kind of, uh, of situation we have always asked the government to interview, to in solve intervene. This. Yes, intervene, to solve this kind of situation. The biggest problem with the water flows from the Inkomati River is here at Ilya Josina Michel. Here the water is unable to flow freely, which has created a swamp. I asked Juan Tembo if this was not excess rainwater from the annual floods that often affect Mozambique in the rainy season. Os, os grandes produtores de cana, quando tiram água nas machambas dele, a via de acesso de água é essa na machamba dos camponeses. Mas, como viste, lá tem um bloqueio onde não passa com facilidade a água. Então, eles não conseguem produzir. Por essa razão, estão a produzir aqui na zona sequeira, onde aqui estão 45 camponeses que estão a trabalhar nessa pequena área. Meanwhile, the sugar company says the problem with water flows is because the river has never been dredged. The director general of Tonga Tiret says this problem already existed before the sugar company arrived in the region. When Tonga started this project uh, in 2007, this water needed to be dredged. Then that is the main cause of the flooding that affected the, 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 the some areas of the community downstream, like in Ilya Josin, Marshall. That's the main where the things happen. And we believe we've been engaging ourselves the, as Tonga, uh, as a Sukarel de Zinavan, with the local government, with the Ministry of uh, Water Affairs. However, according to the Ministry of Water Affairs, dredging is only necessary in rivers where big boats use the waters to navigate, which is not the case with the Inkomati River. Meanwhile, a recent study by CTV, the Living Earth Center, an NGO that deals with land issues, also found that Tongot Ulet often dumps toxic chemicals into the water. They use this uh, chemical products to produce sugar cane and uh, uh, the normal the agriculture system uh, recommend to uh, use valley drainage to watch drainage system. yeah to dra draining system yeah and the water when start from the uh, small farmers go to the draining system which where they use this uh, water to feed the animals cattle yeah to the cattle and these animals don't uh, feel better because they are chemical products However, Tonga Tulit refutes this finding. First of all, there uh, is no use of any pesticide in, in the, our area because we don't have any pests, any di disease of the kind that needed to be used. Then it's known. And the herbicide that has been put there is not the herbicide invented by the company, by specific by uh, Tonga Tulit. It's herbicide that is used worldwide and it, with the month, uh, with the years of years of experiment until the release, all the herbicides that we use is registered and approved by the government of Mozambique. We tried to get a better understanding of the water problem affecting this community. There's a substance in the water which is clearly visible. A pungent stench is also present in the air, which the community says is from the chemicals dumped in the water by Tonga Tulit. Sadly, this is the only water source for these communities in this region who use the alleged contaminated water for their daily needs. Juan Tembo says people are getting sick and animals are dying after drinking this water.
há várias razões para a água cheirar. Primeiramente, eles, quando chega o momento de fechar a empresa, a, a, a empresa de o fabrico de cana, aliás, de açúcar, eles lavam as máquinas. O óleo que as máquinas usam, produtos químicos que eles usam para a produção de, 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 da cana, para, para queimar o capim herbicida, lavam as máquinas na, no, nos rios, nas valas. E nas valas jogam a água para as machambas dos camponeses. Então, aquele veneno ele muda a qualidade da água, muda de cor, por isso fica preta e cheira muito mal. Essa água contamina a vida do homem e dos animais. Os animais morrem muito nesta região. As pessoas têm doenças incuráveis por causa dessa doença. The smell that you feel, most of the time, when you, come, when you clean the dead canals, because the vegetation gets rotten, etc. That's why you get the smell. It's not because it's pesticide or herbicide. It's put them there. In a moment, we confront Tonga Hewlett on this alleged controversial land claim. Having made prior arrangements, our understanding was that we had secured an interview with the director of the Shinavan Sugar Mill. But when we arrived here, we referred all questions to the head office in KwaZulu-Natal. We then approached Tonga Hewlett in South Africa, requesting an interview with the CEO, Peter Stardy. But they declined our request. Eventually, the company agreed that we interview the director general of their Mozambican operations in their KZN offices. Okay, now you, you have me here. Rosario Kumbi has worked for Tonga Hewlett for the past 13 years. Prior to this, he was the national director of Mozambique's sugar sector. He also occupied a number of senior jobs in government. Before this ex expansion program went ahead, was there enough dialogue with the community that you explained to them exactly how this is going to work? We believe so. It was there because not only Tonga itself alone, it was with, together with the government. And the, when the project was approved by the government, the local government was well briefed, was leaded all the meetings, all the conference with the, with the local administrator. Them they need is not the investor that leads. However, the district government at Manisa says there was clearly not enough consultation with the community. This has created a lot of unhappiness with the project. Th this kind of problems happens when uh, the people who want to produce sugar cane, they doesn't talk with the government. They doesn't talk with the community. Because when the people who are producing sugar cane, they need biggest harvest to produce sugar cane. Sugarcane mm -hmm. doesn't wa want to be produced in, in uh, one hectare, okay? It's not, they want to be produced maybe in areas more than 50, 100 hectares. In Mozambique, all land belongs to the state. However, communities have permanent occupation rights through the country's land law. Foreign investors like Tonga Judith can apply for land concessions, which are called duats, but this is subject to proper consultation and the necessary approval from the community. We approached the Ministry of Agriculture, who facilitates this process. I asked the Director General if the Duat system was not failing poor communities. No, é justo uh, okay. dizer que o sistema de Duat não está a funcionar porque, uh, na verdade, ninguém um, até aqui nos tem reportado de que não tem acesso à terra. Meanwhile, the Living Earth Center says. More than often, government favors big investors, with indigenous farmers simply being pushed off their land. In situations in which there are companies large, with a very large capital, the government ends up giving priority to these companies in detriment of the rights that the communities already possess. Because our law says that the communities can acquire the right to use the land according to the customs and customs. They don't need to have a document, they don't need to have a register. The Tongo Tulip's profits from the Mozambique expansion are up by almost 200 percent from 2014 to 2015. The Tongo Tulip's profits from the Mozambique expansion or up by almost 200%. Preferential taxes and duty-free exports to the EU saw the sugar giant lift its profits above 2 billion rand in the past financial year through its combined operations in the SADC region. Mozambique enjoys uh, the status, special status with the markets like uh, European Union, uh, in another like uh, America with Agoa, and the, like in the, uh, can uh, specific in, the, in Europe as a special program called Everything But Arms that, uh, you know, Mozambique also enjoy. 
And then it's been a, a special year on the worldwide for the commodity called sugar. But these huge profits mean very little for poor communities that farm the exported sugar. More than 80% of Mozambicans are engaged in agricultural activities. A government study found that the high levels of malnutrition is because small-scale farmers only produce enough food to feed their families for less than eight months of the year, and this is not changing. Isufu Tankar says growing more sugarcane does not ensure food security. Não houve nenhuma negociação, mas sim o governo atribuiu aquela área a essas empresas de produção de açúcar, que quando começaram a explorar a área, inclusive até fecharam as valas de drenagem que lá existiam, criando o alagamento das áreas dos camponeses, o que fez com que os camponeses deixassem de produzir e ficassem independentes dessas empresas. Muitas das pessoas tornaram-se trabalhadores, empregados dessas empresas e não possuíam aquela capacidade de produzir tanto produtos para o seu autossustento. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Agriculture gave their assurance that the land conflict between Tonga Hewlett and indigenous farmers would be resolved. O que eu tenho a dizer à comunidade é que não perca esperança, um, porque o governo está ao seu lado, as leis uh, estão ao seu favor, o conflito vai ser dirimido e, e, e os direitos que neste momento poderão estar em causa serão, um, digamos assim, restituídos. The conflict is one of more than 300 other similar cases reported to the Ministry of Agriculture. Meanwhile, Tongot Hewlett has announced plans to grow its operations by a further 30% within the next three years. This could mean that more land will have to be expropriated which is bound to have a direct effect on indigenous farmers like Katerina George to produce more food. So what are your views on this issue? Now, if you're tweeting, use the hashtag special assignment. We can also Facebook or email us. And on Friday at 2.30 p.m., I'll do a follow-up discussion on my SAFM radio show. Last week, we brought you the last in our three-part series on illegally converted panel van taxis. Lots of comment. I've picked out two of them. Lebohang tweeted saying, it's sad that commuters are victims of these moving coffins called taxis. Your show sent shivers down my spine. And Nate Watson made this interesting observation on Facebook saying, Many ambulances were Toyota panel vans, which were converted into ambulances. Is this conversion safe to transport patients? Well, perhaps a topic for further investigation. But that's it for tonight's show. Please join us again next week when we point out the issues that matter.